Hey, it's Mr. Lum again, and we are going to be uh, taking a look at some reactions and uh, making some, uh, writing out some chemical reactions. So right here we have a little bit of information about how to write out some chemical reactions, and you should be familiar with this from your grade 10, but uh, we're going to include some more information than what you might have done in the past. So here I have solid, liquid, gas, and aqueous. And these are usually how we're going to find chemicals. Uh, and if we have a chemical reaction, we're going to give a little bit more information in our chemical reaction to show what kind of phase or state is that particular species in. So here I have a chemical reaction right here. And it's silver nitrate plus sodium chloride making uh, sodium nitrate and silver chloride. So I have silver nitrate and my silver nitrate is in solution or in other words it's aqueous. So what this means right here is that it is dissolved in water. Silver nitrate is dissolved in water. It might be at a you know 0 0.1 molar concentration of silver nitrate. Uh, or it could be a 0.5 molar concentration of silver nitrate, but what it means is just it's dissolved in water. We also have sodium chloride that is also dissolved in water. Okay, And it's going to produce sodium nitrate, which is uh, dissolved in water as well, and it's going to be producing a solid, or sometimes what we call a precipitate. And precipitate or solid uh, just means that when you mix these two liquids together that this kind of white solid is going to be coming out of solution and here we have to indicate this in our chemical reaction by writing that it's a solid. Now here we have a different one. We have mercury plus uh, gas making uh, mercury oxide. Now mercury is in liquid state and oxygen is in a gaseous state and when they come together they're going to be forming some sort of solid. Okay, And so again in our chemical reactions we're just going to give a little bit more information so that we can kind of tell the person who's reading this what's, what phases these things are in. Now, in the last question, you might have noticed that oxygen was written as O2. There are seven elements which are what we call diatomic. Di meaning two, and atomic meaning atoms. So there are seven elements that rarely to never are found by themselves. They kind of bind with themselves. So one of these elements, for example, is hydrogen. Hydrogen never just hangs out by itself. It, uh, it combines with another hydrogen, so we always write it as H2. And there's seven of these elements. And you can memorize these seven elements in, in two different ways. So here's one way, is that the seven elements make the number seven on the periodic table. So it kind of looks like the number seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we, it makes the number seven, but there's only six in here, and so we kind of have to include this one as well. This is the seventh one. So the number seven makes the seven, and hydrogen kind of does its own thing over there. So that's one way you can kind of remember um, the diatomic elements. Uh, another way that students like to remember is using the term Humphbrickle. So they just kind of remember, oh, Humphbrickle is the, is the magic seven. Or in other words, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, uh, bromine, iodine, and chlorine. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are the seven elements that 
when they're in reaction they're going to be forming H2 or O2 or N2 or F2, Br2, I2 or Cl2. Okay. So if you ever see a uh, reaction that says chlorine gas is reacting with, then you know that it's going to be written as Cl2. Okay. So let's get a little bit of practice on that kind of stuff and writing our subscripts and some of our uh, other information. So we have a word problem here. It says sodium, or sorry, solid potassium and water uh, makes potassium hydroxide solution and hydrogen gas and is released. So solid potassium. Now it says it's a solid. Oops, sorry. It says it's a solid. So we're going to write, and the symbol for potassium is K. And so since it's a solid, I'm going to write the subscript S because it's a solid. Plus water. Now uh, water, as we know, is liquid, so I'm going to write L, and it's going to be making K, oh, this is not a Q, I just made a little mistake there, K-O-H, solution. And so, since it's in solution, I'm going to write aqueous. and hydrogen gas. So hydrogen gas, again, is part of that Hompf-Brickel or that magic seven. So I need to write the two right there. And since it's gas, I'm gonna write gas like that, okay? So here's another question right here. We have one molar sodium chloride is added to 0.3 molar silver nitrate and a precipitate forms of silver chloride sodium nitrate is left dissolved in the solution. So what we're going to do is, since it is 1.0 molar or one mole per liter, that this means having this kind of number right here kind of indicates that it's dissolved in water. So it's going to be NaCl aqueous because it's dissolved in water and it's going to be added to silver nitrate aqueous so AgNO3 aqueous and it's going to form a precipitate or in other words this is another fancy word for saying a solid and sodium nitrate and it's dissolved in solution and that's another way of saying aqueous okay and so that's how we can kind of use some of this diatomic information here and using some of these subscripts to do indicate what state or phase uh, these species are in